Let me begin with uh, rather unhappy statistics on uh, casualties of uh, road accidents. Uh, according to the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent, uh, more than one million people died uh, annually on uh, road accidents and more than 50 million uh, are injured or seriously um, injured. Uh, statistics for countries like Czech Republic uh, are of course, uh, um, let's say, the casualties are not that uh, present, but uh, numbers are alarming as, uh, as well. Um, in addition, 50% of all deaths, according to the Red Cross, um, happened minutes uh, after the accident, which is important to realize because uh, usually it takes uh, uh, from 8 to 15 minutes to uh, uh, rescue team to, to arrive to the place and start uh, with uh, handling the situation. Uh, uh, some conditions like uh, uh, stopping of, of the heart uh, um, it take usually uh, four minutes uh, um, until brain cells uh, start to die. So in those conditions, under those uh, conditions, uh, some lives could be saved only by lay rescuers. Um, according to the Czech uh, Red Cross, we would be able to uh, save another 10% of uh, fatalities uh, if there were uh, skilled enough uh, lay rescuers uh, at, the, at the site of the crash scene. Uh, but uh, the importance of first aid isn't limited only to uh, decreasing percentage of uh, casualties. Uh, knowledge of first aid is also related to handling the scene of a uh, crash in order to prevent an additional uh, damage or uh, additional uh, injuries. Uh, despite this uh, overwhelming uh, evidence, um, as you can see, uh, lifelong uh, exposure to first aid training uh, is uh, somewhat limited, uh, at least uh, in countries like the Czech Republic, where only 4% of the population are being systematically trained in the first aid. Uh, on the other hand, there are countries like Austria and Germany where significantly higher uh, proportion of population is being exposed to lifelong training uh, in um, first aid. But uh, as they say, not everything that glitters is gold. Uh, and according to some research, approximately only 13% uh, of uh, all uh, lay people uh, that are being trained systematically are capable and willing to uh, act and uh, uh, to help with uh, first aid on the crash scene. Um, in other words, most people are not uh, prepared to uh, behave and to act uh, effectively and accordingly uh, at the accident site. Uh, well, you may, you may ask, how is it possible that uh, there is such a huge disproportion? Uh, for example, there are many myths or uh, biased information how to uh, behave or what to do. Um, and um, there is another factor that is uh, being uh, also underestimated and that is, uh, let's say, psychological regulation, uh, which could be related to worries. Uh, do I uh, do things correctly? Am I capable of carrying out the first aid in a way that I will help? Which is uh, really common among people giving first aid. Uh, also, uh, preparedness for uh, the, really, uh, the demanding situation is not being usually a part of uh, those programs. In other words, uh, there is uh, a strong need for innovation in the first training uh, across Europe, uh, across uh, countries of Visegrad. Uh, you may ask yourself uh, what comprises uh, first aid that is uh, effective and uh, meaningful. Well, first of all, knowledge uh, of uh, procedures, what to do, uh, knowledge of the uh, emergency line which needs to be uh, called, uh, that is one thing. Another thing is uh, skills uh, that are uh, necessary to provide first aid to, to help people uh, with uh, spinal or other uh, damages. But of course there is another factor, uh, as, I, as I said uh, earlier before, that is being uh, underestimated and that is, uh, uh, let's say, psychological regulation. It uh, consists of uh, belief that I'm able, I'm capable to do uh, the right thing uh, it could be uh, related to a uh, phenomena called as a uh, bystander effect, the diffusion of responsibility. In other words, the more people are present, the less probably some, uh, someone will actually do something. Uh, 
So uh, there are uh, factors that are uh, not being, uh, let's say, so visible as uh, appropriate knowledge. Uh, and uh, this psychological regulation uh, is usually not part of uh, usual trainings for drivers that is uh, being mandatory, for example, in the Czech Republic. Uh, as uh, my colleagues discovered in, uh, or revealed in their research, uh, when they were uh, doing a qualitative uh, and deep uh, interviews with people who experienced giving first aid, uh, there are uh, several needs or several conditions that they faced and they uh, needed to, uh, for example, have uh, better practice of uh, skills of uh, procedures in order to provide better effective first aid. Uh, they often felt overwhelmed by uh, individual pieces of information that were not related, that were not structured. Uh, they experienced, uh, uh, let's say, uh, cognitive overload. They were not um, uh, able to focus on important things. They were uh, facing uh, details that were not uh, relevant. And as well, uh, they were not being uh, prepared mentally for delivering a first aid. They were doubting, as I said before, uh, that they would be able to help appropriately. Uh, uh, also, what could be uh, interesting is although those people, uh, the first aid giver and first aid taker, uh, were complete strangers. Uh, people who gave first aid felt strong interest and emotional bond with uh, people to whom they delivered the first aid uh, and uh, felt uh, various negative uh, uh, emotions when they were not uh, able to get to know what happened to the, um, those people after they received medical treatment. Uh, based on this uh, research, my colleagues proposed uh, evidence-based, 16 hours long uh, conception of first aid that focused more on, uh, uh, let's say, drill of skills and, to, and it worked more with psychological variables. Uh, and in order to assess its effectiveness, uh, we conducted a pilot study for um, 30 respondents, 40, 30 participants, whom were uh, randomly assigned to two groups. Uh, in the first group, um, they receive only classic, uh, let's say, or traditional four hours uh, long uh, conception of first aid that is uh, being um, included as a mandatory uh, training during uh, driving license procedure. And another group of respondents uh, were uh, let's say, under the influence of this experience-based uh, conception. Uh, we wanted to assess uh, uh, every possible important aspect, such as knowledge of what to do, skills that are needed to provide effective first aid, and also um, in order to uh, be able to generalize from the uh, context of the study, we wanted to uh, use a simulated uh, situation uh, that would include uh, um, psychological variables including stress and um, so on. How we assessed those variables? Well, knowledge uh, were assessed uh, or was assessed through uh, open-ended questions that were asking on um, factual information, for example, number of the emergency line or uh, ways how to deal with uh, specific phenomena like uh, uh, spinal problems or internal bleeding. Uh, and it was uh, evaluated by a trained lector uh, in um, emergency. Uh, skills were assessed through uh, performation. Uh, again, it was uh, uh, assessed by a skilled uh, observer in this matter. And uh, last but not least, uh, measures like uh, preparedness or uh, activity, uh, safety of the procedure was assessed uh, in this uh, scene. Uh, everything was uh, evaluated uh, on scale from one to five, on which uh, one represents the best possible way of dealing with things, and five the worst. Uh, uh, as you can see, there is a, a sketch, a graphical depiction. Uh, the, the blue one represents the uh, experience-based uh, first aid, whereas the uh, red one is a standard. Uh, you can see uh, a huge uh, variability, or uh, especially in, in specialized issues like internal injury issues or spinal injury issues. Uh, on the other hand, even the most simple basic thing, emergency line number, uh, was not uh, 
kind of um, homogeneous as we would uh, expect. But because graphical depiction could be misleading, uh, I wanted to show you uh, it in a, in a, let's say, statistical speech, although we decided not to conduct any hypothesis testing because of our limited sample size. Uh, again, as you can see, every participant uh, of this extended uh, experience-based uh, program was able to recall um, their emergency number. Uh, and not only their performance, overall performance was better, uh, they were acting in a more, uh, more or less the same way. Uh, they were able to provide consistent uh, first aid or consistent uh, behavior. Uh, another uh, was the skill assessment. Uh, although uh, chest compression is uh, included in the driving um, training or um, first aid that is being uh, provided for uh, drivers, uh, you, you again can see uh, at least small differences between those two. Not speaking about uh, things that are not included, but also uh, important without any doubts, like uh, check of life functions. In terms of numbers, uh, again, you can see uh, much higher consistency and better score for those who uh, were exposed to extended uh, program. Last but not least, uh, evaluation in the, in the situation of the scene of a crash. Uh, in, again, in every category, uh, those who um, were exposed to extended uh, version of uh, first aid training in, proved uh, much better preparedness to, to act accordingly. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, the most important or visible uh, difference was in the safety risk awareness. As you can see, uh, this uh, conception of uh, many uh, procedures that, that, need to, uh, that, that should lead to making a place of, uh, of a crash scene safe uh, were much better approached by those who uh, experienced uh, this uh, extended first aid training, as, as is again shown in the numbers. If I should uh, make any take-home message, uh, there is definitely uh, a need and a space for improved, better way how to train in, in first aid because uh, our uh, previous or let's say our traditional uh, procedures are not being that effective, although first aid could definitely save uh, many lives. And not only that, it, um, it's a necessary part of uh, uh, managing road safety and therefore it should receive more attention. Uh, of course, there are cons of it, I, I mean uh, pros. Uh, it's, uh, it's definite that uh, it's an important issue. And uh, as I try to uh, present uh, this extended program, or let's say program different than the traditional one, provides much uh, better results. Um, on the other hand, uh, it's of course more costly. And uh, there are other disadvantages as well. For example, not enough trainer, uh, trained uh, trainers. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, you can imagine, our sample size that was kind of uh, limited does not allow us to uh, extrapolate our results. In other words, other res another research is, uh, is needed. Thank you for your attention. If uh, you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Although. Uh, I must admit uh, our brain trust on that uh, on this topic uh, is uh, Ms. Veronika uh, Kurechkova that couldn't be here. Thank you.